the Battle of Stalingrad is seen as one of the major turning points of the Second World War. Inside of the city, the Soviet Red Army and the Germans would fight brutally with each street and even each house, forming an important part of the urban warfare. The horrific battle would see an estimated 2 million total casualties between the 23rd of August 1942 and the 2nd of February 1943. The city would remain a ruin throughout the battle, with intense bombing hitting the area, but it would be the Red Army who, despite being forced back initially, would launch a huge counter-offensive, successfully trapping much of the German 6th Army. Eventually, the Germans and the Axis forces would surrender, however the stories of Stalingrad would live on in propaganda. One such story to emerge from the ruins of Stalingrad is one about the incredibly gifted Soviet sniper Vasily Zaitsev and his intense sniper battle with the Germans sent to deal with him, Irvin Koenig. Join us today as we look at the epic sniper battle of Stalingrad, Vasily Zaitsev vs Irvin Koenig. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Before we begin, just a short disclaimer, the legitimacy behind this story is sometimes debated and we'll explore this later on throughout the video. During the Second World War, a number of heroes would emerge, and one of these was a Soviet Red Army sniper, Vasily Zaitsev. Throughout the conflict he would claim a large number of lives, and was seen as a hero within the Soviet Union. He was an incredibly skilled sniper. His skills with a rifle would lead to him becoming a sniper, and he would understand the importance of concealing himself in different terrain. Zaitsev would use high ground, rubble and even water pipes to scout the enemy, and take deadly shots, and after this would change position after he had taken a few lives. He would form a partnership with Nikolai Kulikov. Together they would use hide and attack tactics. In particular Zaitsev would also like to cover a large area from three positions. The sniper and the scout would then work together to inflict the damage. It was during the Battle of Stalingrad that Zaitsev would really strike fear into the hearts of his enemies. Before Stalingrad, he had taken the lives of 32 Axis soldiers with his standard issue Mosin Nagant M1891 rifle. The free line rifle was a 5 shot bolt action magazine fed rifle and was standard issue inside the Red Army. Snipers were provided with different scopes to fit onto it and Zaitsev would use this weapon. At Stalingrad he would pick off different targets. Within his first days inside the besieged and crumbling city, he would kill 40 German soldiers. The Soviet high command was so impressed with the skills demonstrated by him that he was placed in charge of later training other Soviet snipers and he would act as their teacher. He would teach that observation and patience were as important as the shot a sniper would get off. He would say, you watch a Nazi officer come out of a bunker, acting all high and mighty, ordering his soldiers every which way, and putting on an air of authority. The officer hasn't got the slightest idea that he only has seconds to live. Overall, throughout the Battle of Stalingrad, Zaitsev would continue to rack up dozens of kills on his kill count. He would claim the lives of 225 enemy soldiers inside the city, and would get the better of 11 snipers. From this, the epic story of Vasily Zaitsev and Irving Koenig would emerge. Allegedly, according to Zaitsev, the Germans were in a state of shock at the work that the Soviets were doing picking off officers and soldiers at ease. They would bring in the chief of their own sniper school to hunt down and take out the Soviet ace, Major Irving Koenig. Allegedly, it had been discovered from a German soldier who had been interrogated that the Germans sent their top guy to try and take out the Soviet sniper. Over the next few days, an epic game of hide and seek would take place within Stalingrad between the Soviet and German sniping aces. After a few days, there were no signs of Koenig being in the area nearby to Zaitsev until three Russian snipers were taken out in quick succession in a small area of Stalingrad. Upon hearing this news, Zaitsev would begin to slowly and cautiously head over to the area, believing the deaths to be the work of the notorious Koenig. Zaitsev headed to the area where the three Russians' lives were taken and prepared himself for a sniper duel. He would later state that how he knew the handwriting of German snipers, being able to distinguish between experienced and beginner snipers, cowards from stubborn ones by their ability to hide and by their shot. Describing Owen Koenig, he would say, As for the character of a leader of the enemy sniper school, it remained a puzzle for me. Observing our comrades each day didn't show any particular result. 
It was hard to say where the fascist was, but there was one story. My friend the sniper, Morozov, got his optical sight broken by the enemy, and soldier Shaikin was wounded. Morozov and Shaikin were considered as experienced snipers. They often came out as winners in difficult and hard fights with the enemy. There was no doubt, they faced a fascist super sniper that I had been looking for. Zaitsev would head over to the position previously held by the two snipers. He would be accompanied constantly by his scout and friend, Nikolai Kulikov. They knew every part of this area, and Zaitsev would stare towards a pile of bricks next to a sheet of metal. He deemed this to be a good spot for a sniper, and Kulikov and Zaitsev would wait here for a whole day, while Zaitsev was observing. Kulikov would wait for the order to shoot to attract the enemy's attention. Before sunrise, the two went back for the ambush. Zaitsev was inside a pit, with Kulikov inside another. Between them was a communication rope that linked them together. Time dragged on and on inside the bombed-out ruins of Stalingrad, in the small area of the town. Vasily was waiting. Planes would go overhead dropping bombs on the city, but Zaitsev would be fixed on the metal sheet. When happy, the rope would be pulled, and that would be the symbol for Zaitsev for his partner Kulikov to raise a mitten on a stick. By doing this, it would attract a shot. The first time Kulikov did this, nothing happened. However, an hour later, the mitten was raised again, and a rifle shot rang out. This confirmed Zaitsev's suspicions that a sniper was under the metal sheet. All they had to do now was to take the shot and bait him. They did not want to scare him, and then have to hunt him for more days, but the pair would change position and wait another night. They even waited for the next half a day, and in the afternoon the sun shone out in Stalingrad. The enemy position under the metal was under direct sunlight, and with this a duel would occur. As the sunlight caught the metal sheet, Zaitsev's senses were alerted, with him noticing a glint of light. He noticed a light hitting the sight of a German sniper rifle, and with this the Soviet pair would decide to end things. Kulikov raised up very slowly a metal helmet, giving the impression that a Soviet sniper was lifting up his helmet. As soon as he did this, Irving Koenig shot, hitting the helmet which fell to the floor. The German sniper believed with this that he had won the epic battle which had lasted for days. With this the German checked his shot, lifting his head slightly above the parapet, and with this Zaitsev pulled the trigger, delivering a headshot to Major Irving Koenig, the celebrated German sniper. After this alleged duel, Zaitsev would continue to fight on, however was injured later when a mortar attack injured his eyes. After the war he would tell of his stories and his encounters inside the horror of Stalingrad. However, today many historians doubt the legitimacy of this story about Zaitsev facing off against Irving Koenig. The story of the epic sniper battle inside the ruins comes solely from Zaitsev himself, and doubts do emerge about whether Koenig actually existed. No records of him have been found, despite him allegedly being the elite German sniper that he was. Later on he was referred to as Heinz Vorwald, and no records also exist of this man. If Koenig did have a huge Soviet kill count of around 400 as it was stated, it would have been known about. It was also possible that he would have been given a military cross for this. Snipers also were not promoted to high ranks such as majors, as it forced them into positions of leadership, rather than them doing the jobs they were most effective for. In terms of a time frame, it would have meant that within Stalingrad, Koenig would also have had to take out 400 Soviets in around a month. Some historians for this believe that the story of Zaitsev and Irving Koenig is one simply based for propaganda. What isn't up for debate though is the effectiveness of Vasily Zaitsev. He was a sniper with immense skill that took out hundreds of German soldiers in one of the most brutal battlefields of the Second World War. The ruined buildings and destruction of the city of Stalingrad made for a maze for Zaitsev to negotiate with his partner and his trusted rifle. He would be a constant thorn in the side of the German army throughout the long battle that would claim the lives of hundreds of thousands. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.